Are you really gonna try to cover black hair in 22 minutes? Yep. Good luck. Why do you think is the right time for Blackish to discuss black hair? We started talking about it in the summer, like in June, like black hair and what it would mean and whose journey would it be, because it was a really important issue for us. We had a few episodes talk about colorism and about generational connections between women, and it felt like everything was pointing to, like, now's the time to just do hair. What was your reaction when you heard Blackish would be tackling a subject like this? My first thought was, wow. There hasn't been a TV show that would show a young lady in a scarf or showing multiple textures in a family. Black hair has been in the media a lot, good and bad, and I think it was really important to kind of delve deeper into the black culture for the larger world to see. Our episode kind of breaks form. It's not a traditional episode. When you're on a show that's like this far in the game, it's like, let's do something crazy get the script and it says musical number. And then you find out Jill Scott is writing a song for the show. That was really fun. Box braids, Senegalese twists, straight weaves down my wrist. This episode really celebrates the various ways that black hair is beautiful. So what do you think is the most beautiful thing about black hair? I think the most beautiful thing about black hair is that really you can make it anything you want. It's the versatility and the fact that we have so many options to express ourselves. Put the girl in braids and call it a day. And when she's growing her hair out, I can hook her up with some locks. Oh, my chair is open. I can get you natural in less than 10 minutes. What is she talking about? For me, it's like just changing it, having the opportunity to express myself with my hair. You could manipulate it any way you want. And I think that's one of the magical things about our hair. My mom used to always love putting my hair in two strand twist with little baubles at the end. Usually it was a center part with two pigtails and barrettes on the end. Most of the time it was two ponytails that would end up like this. Everyone had so many different journeys, whether it was their mom or their stepmom or their aunties who did their hair, or they went to the salon or they were at home doing, getting their hair done in the sink. Let's go, get a hat, get a scarf. We got an appointment. I loved how you and your mom like go to the salon, you get your hair done, and there's a whole like learning that happens with that. It's tradition. It's really how mothers pass on our culture to our daughters. And as they get older, we sort of lose that grasp that we have on our daughters because we want them to be confident, beautiful women. This was very much a journey of this mother sort of losing this part of the relationship with her daughter, but really gaining like a more mature, closer friendship with her. I didn't know this decision was gonna be so hard. I feel like I'm gonna make the wrong choice. There is no such thing as a wrong choice. And despite what the world tells us, all black hair is beautiful. Black hair is beautiful because it can be so many things. It can be political. It can be about beauty. It can be about self-worth and showing everyone how fierce you are. And to love black hair is to love blackness itself. Black hair in any form is beautiful and perfect as long as it's what you want. What do you want, young black girl, for your hair? Do it, and that's all that matters.